Mac 2018. I'm on the open mine stand. I'm with Ken Baldwin. Ken, we're going to have a walk around the stand, look at some of these rather uh, tasty parts. Let's start with this one. What what have we, what, well, I know what we've got here, yeah. but how do you go about machining this? So it's, oh. yeah, it's machined from one, one solid billet uh, on a grob machine tool. And the, the, what's the sort of metal removal on something like that? I mean, it must be absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I don't know, 99% of the material removed. And how on earth do you go about the programming of something like this using Hypermill? Uh, I mean, you start off with the roughing. Uh, I mean, really, the, the challenge here is uh, obviously the tooling. So, the tool, you know, we've got a lot of long, long tooling going through, through the hoop. Um, and the key, the key thing here is the collision detection and collision avoidance in Hypermill. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, because if you've got a tool that's going right the way through, yeah. And how does it do that? It works it all out for itself. Yeah, I, I mean, see. you've got to guide it. You tell it what areas you want to machine. But then once yeah, you build up the, the information of what yeah, the, the, the tool geometry, um, it knows the geometry of the part and the machine, and then it's able to calculate all of that from there. Do you know what the machining time of that was from that solid billet? No, I don't, I'm afraid. It was a long time. Yeah, <laughs> but a very nice part. Okay, so that's, that's part one. Let's look at, this is familiar to me, because I know we've looked at this before, but I do like to go over um, ground we have gone over before, because this is about reducing cycle times. Might be better around that way, Chris. Uh, this part is an aerospace structure, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. So it's an, aer it's an aerospace part. Uh, really, the, the key thing, obviously, there is a lot of material to remove on here, but... 70% of the cycle time normally on components is actually in the finishing uh, and it's, a, it's often an area that people don't actually think well it, there isn't anything that I can do here. And, and does this tool actually come out of here? Yes, it, does, yeah. it does. So could you just maybe highlight for the camera what the, the action of the tool is when so, it's machining? So this, this, is a, this is a conical barrel tool so it's a new cutter geometry which is an innovation from Open Mind. So, so it's, it's for the finishing of the walls of these, these pockets. So, so the key thing here is because we've got a, a, a cone angle on the tool, that means rather than you know, a tangential barrel tool, the tool will be a lot straighter. So then when you get inside the pocket, you see there you've got a collision against the tool holder. So by having that additional cone angle, it means you can have that tool a lot shorter, a lot more rigid, and then using this very large radius on the side of the tool, you can have much bigger step downs where traditionally you would ball nose that wall to death, um, you know, obviously much, much larger cycle time. What was the cycle time of this part? Do you know this one? Yeah, from uh, two hours and 15 minutes, which includes the, de 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 the deburring on the machine as well. So that's thanks to Max Machining on the Hypermill software, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You want to put that back and we'll move on to... Um... It's obviously at the end of the show now on Thursday. Have you had a good week? Yeah, really good week. We've been uh, inundated with new inquiries, uh, lots of existing customers. And have you, have you sold uh, any, um, any seats to any new customers? Yes, yes, we have. We took uh, some orders on the stand uh, on the first day. Good stuff. This, again, a bit familiar to, to me. Can you tell us what this is? And, and it's, a, it's about mirroring, isn't it, this, this particular part? Yeah, so this is, this is a brake caliper uh, for a mo motorsport brake caliper, so not what you see on your normal everyday road car. Uh, again, machined from one solid billet. This is the actual part from the machine Alcon Components, one of our customers. And wasn't there a significant improvement in, in the machining time or the programming time as a result of using Hypermill from what they had used before? Yes, there was. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think programming time was reduced from a couple of weeks to a, just a few days. Um, obviously, and then a big challenge, you know, with, with this being a brake caliper, you, there's a left and right hand, you're a mirrored component as well. So with Hypermill, you program one, and then a few clicks. You know, wait, wait for it to then build it. You then get your your opposite hand then for free, essentially. Is that something that's not common with other um, cam softwares, the um, mo mirroring function? You have yes. You, you a lot of cam softwares have mirroring, but issuing cam in, with toolpaths is when you if you have a mirror image of a toolpath, climb milling then becomes conventional milling. Um, so what hypermill hypermill is different here. So we actually do a brand new calculation in the mirrored position so you then keep your cutter direction the same but it's all associative back to your original you know what you've actually programmed so it really is yeah you were getting the best of both worlds okay now th topically this is well very interesting uh firstly how how long did this one take to machine do you know I, it's something like 140 hours of machining time yeah and what's the what's the clever strategies that are used here that made this uh, component or this helmet 
Really, it's uh, lots of scanning with bore mills on here. Really, it's, it's showing the level of detail that you can go to. Again, utilizing the collision avoidance technology within hypermill. So there's lots of intricate detail within that part. I believe you're not allowed to pick that up without a pair of gloves on. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Right. And then uh, this one here, looking at looking at this. This is uh, is this one component or what? There, yeah, there's three components here. So it's the it's it's part of an engine. Uh, I think it's it, well, no, it, it's for it's for a mini. Uh, one of our customers, v, VTEC, uh, they developed this engine and put it in a mini. I think they're getting 250 horsepower per wheel for, from that engine, so it's phenomenally fast. Right, and they're using your software to actually create this part. That's right. Yes. Yes. Sir. Because when it comes to engines and manifolds, you, you've got some porting functions as well, haven't you, which are quite uh, quite unique and, and, and good. Yeah, I mean, again, porting, it's complex geometry going into undercut, and with Hypermill, we have a dedicated strategy for that. So Hypermill is all about giving the user lots of power, but keeping it as simple as possible at the, straight time, at the, at the same time. Okay, now I want to move it to, uh, to, to conclude this here, Kenny, in front of this side. I'm, I've always got to say, I saw the stand going together on Sunday. Uh, very open, obviously with the, the, the bright orange colours, it's very evident that it is open mind here. You always have this 90% figure at your uh, exhibition stands. What does it represent? So this 90%, this is you utilising conical barrel tools within Hypermill. So where you would traditionally ball nose these, you know, these hard to reach areas. If you were to trace back the step over, you know, if you look at the step over that you can achieve with a conical barrel tool against a ball mill, and actually calculate that back to the theoretical scallop height you're getting, that does equate to a 90% cycle time reduction. So that's a genuine figure of what is possible with Hypermill. Uh, it's incredible. And I know 2017 was fantastic for Open Mind. 2018, has it started that way for you? Uh, you know, are you continually getting new users and uh, expanding your business? Yeah, it certainly has. You know, we're, you know, largest revenue that we'd ever done last year. Um, forecast is again to, to beat that again. So yeah, we're going, going from strength to strength. Thank you